right. Motherfucker, they tell you? Yeah, they tell you when the recording is in progress. Yeah. Oh my god. Anyway, welcome to well, and and this isn't me just saying this. Like literally, Scott named it this because he was afraid to be rude and shit. Yeah. But this is the Jave plus Scott podcast. Scott, how are you? I'm good. I can see half of your face. You can see half of it. Yeah. Oh, but now I kind of see more. I think it's just like the camera is okay. All right. Is this more gooder? Yeah, that's gooder. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm upset about this camera. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> this looks like a like this. This looks like I'm I'm recording like like when YouTube first started or something. This is hey, this is a wonderful eight pixels that I'm seeing you on. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible. I uh I have a, I have another camera coming in tomorrow. It's uh, uh 1080. It has a ring light on it, so I can get my OnlyFans going too. You know, on the side, get my side hustle going on. Yup. Charge people two ninety nine to see something. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when you say two ninety nine, is that two dollars and ninety nine or three hundred dollars? You know, you, you you start small and end big. <laughs> <laughs> Hit them with the bargain and then just slowly raise the price. You know, you got to, you got to, this is how you got to get there. It's how you got to get there. Oh, man. Dude, can I tell you how, like, can I tell you about this screenwriting group? I know I was ranting about it earlier. Yeah, yeah. I, like I wanted you to, I wanted you to hold off on telling me earlier because I wanted my reaction to be authentic and shit like that. So... Oh my now, god! Now you now now is the perfect time because I'm I have no idea what happened and I'm ready I'm I'm ready to go. All right, so check this out. It it was last night. Um, I kind of got invited to it and I was like, yeah, cool. I'll, ch- I'll check it out. This seems like you know this seems great. This seems like fun. And just to just to be clear, wh- where is this screen right Discord. 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 Okay. And so I joined and everyone seemed like you know really nice and uh, I was like, all right, cool. Like. I want something like this. Like I want kind of like a community where it's like, this is what I'm working on. What are you mm-hmm. working on? It takes a whole village to raise a child type shit. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and I got two red flags. And I'm not a three strikes you're out type of person. Once I get the second flag, I'm I'm done. Right. I back away slowly. What did J. Cole say? I don't know. He said a lot of things. He said, no, now I'm forgetting. He <laughs> said, fool me one time, shame on you. Fool me two times, can't put the blame on you. Fool me three times, fuck the peace sign, pull out the chopper and let it rain on you. That's like one of them. Or, you know, as George Bush has said, you know, fool me <laughs> once, shame on you. Fool me twice, you think. He included that sound bite in the song. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So here's the first flag. They, uh, this guy is like, hey, I, I really need help, like trying to figure out where I want the story to go. Can, you know, can anybody hear me out? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Hit me up. And so I was like, uh, I was like, yeah, tell me your story, like everything leading up to where you're stuck and where you want it to end. Hmm. We talked for about 40 minutes and he was making it sound like it was like the midpoint that like he was at this part where it was like he could go a number of ways and he didn't know where it was going to go. Right. But, you know, I talked him through it. I helped him out. And then I woke up today and there's like a little channel on there for like uh, sharing the work that you're doing. Okay. And he was like, hey, guys. Uh, just got five pages in. Go ahead and give this a read. Uh, you know, hit me with you know honest feedback. That's what I'm looking for. Honest feedback, yeah. For five pages. Okay. I thought this motherfucker was in the middle. He is five pages in, and he was like, "Guys, I need help." With this. Okay. I was like, "Okay," because that infuriates me. Like, not the him getting stuck. But getting five pages in and then wanting honest feedback from strangers. Okay. 
it's the stupidest fucking thing. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't you wouldn't you agree that sometimes strangers are the best people to give you feedback because strangers are like like once you see the completed product, right? Strangers, yes. I mean, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Here. Okay. Strangers are the ones who are going to consume your product once you're done with it anyway, right? So wouldn't you want a stranger's opinion, uh, mm-hmm. especially someone who's well versed in, or, or, or that you hope at least is uh, versed enough, like in the craft in this particular case, screenwriting, to like, to like, like tell you the truth rather than a friend who will just say, "Oh, this is good." You know what I'm saying? Here's the thing. I agree with you, but here's where you're wrong. Um, <laughs> this is a feature film he's talking about making. Okay. He stopped after five pages. Okay. Of, of a supposedly 90. Okay. He, he did it, stopped, and then he was like, all right, guys, let me get your feedback. There's nothing constructive we can give, right? Because okay. the only real thing you can say is like, oh, okay, keep writing. Right. Because okay. if, if you sit there and you're like, yeah, well, okay, well, this part didn't, doesn't work. The only thing they're going to respond would be like, well, you know, later um, in the movie, like, this is going to happen. And you're like, well, I didn't fucking know that because you didn't write it. Right, right. I get what you're saying. So you, like, right, he didn't present, like, a completed project. It's Yeah. If it's five out of 90 pages, so he, he probably, it's, that's not a lot. Like, it's not a lot at all. Yeah, that's, that, ain't, that ain't shit, actually. <laughs> that's not even the fuck, that's barely the intro. Yeah, that's, wow. 90 so, pages isn't really a whole lot, is it? Is it? It's not, but that's, you know, they, they say, like, uh, one page is roughly a minute, so you know, like ninety minutes. Okay. But yeah, that was that was number one where I was like, okay, something about this place seems a little off. Um, later on, um, apparently, they um, he cranked out like a shitload, right? So okay. he, he got to like 45 pages. And I was like, damn, that's good. You know, good job, bro. That's and then 45 he was like, minutes. Yeah. So I was like, that's great. And then he was like, all right, anyone want to do a table read of it tonight? And I was like, no. I don't want to spend an hour like reading half of your movie. Right. Like finish it and then we can talk. Mm-hmm. So here's where the second, the second flag comes in. And this was the moment where, because I know that I'm complaining, but you kind of have to realize that, like, I hate people. So do I. I hate people. Like, even if I like you, like, even if I really enjoy you, I love time to myself. That's fair. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm very much the same way. Yeah. So, already I was like, my fucking God, like, they're talking all day. Like, I don't. Like, I, I don't care about the conversation. Okay. And so at, at one point, this other guy joins in. And um, he's like, hey, has anyone seen uh, Spiral? The, the Saw movie with Chris Rock? Yeah. Go ahead. I have, a, I, have, I have so much I want to say about Spiral and Chris Rock. But go okay. L- let me get... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. Let me get to a point, and then we'll talk about it, then we'll get back to the story, because it makes okay. sense. Okay. Um, so he was like, hey, has anyone seen it? And I was like, I was like, yeah, all right. I was like, all right, you know, like this is a screenwriting type question. So I was like, yeah, I did see it. Yeah, it's all right. It's two completely different movies trying to balance a tone that's n- that doesn't ever really balance. Right. Um, and he was like, Yeah, it's fucking awful. And I was like, All right. And he was like, There's not enough saw in it. What does he mean? Is go ahead. Is not enough saw in it? Like, um, he's a uh, apparently he's a very big saw fan, right? And so going into the movie, he was wanting more of a saw movie, but it's not even called saw. Yeah, you can't. I'm. I'm not. A, I'm not. That's like going to watch a a movie 
named tomato and mad because there's no bananas in it. Well, okay, but it is a spiritual successor to Saul. So I do understand where it's coming from. And it's directed by the dude who, who made the later Saul. Well, well, no, if it's, if it's, if you want more Saw shit, go watch Saw. This is Spiral. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's I agree. Like, 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 a, like a, a spiritual successor, right, isn't, that's <laughs> not the same as a successor. How many Saw movies are there not included in Spiral because that's not a Saw movie? I think eight, seven or eight. If there were, if, so if there are eight Saw movies, and and they wanted to put more saw shit in there, they would have called it saw nine. This is spiral. Yeah. He's okay. absolutely wrong. He's wrong. Okay. So before I continue into this story, what do you think about spiral? <laughs> so no, here's the thing. I haven't seen uh spiral, right? Uh, I've been okay. what, what I wanted to say about spiral is I want to see spiral. I heard a lot of great things about spiral. The main thing I wanted to talk about was Chris Rock. Okay. <laughs> Lately, lately, I've been seeing Chris Rock in some shit that I would not expect to see Chris Rock in. Yeah, he was like, in Fargo. Yeah. He was in, did you see that? Yeah. What do you think? What did you think about it? Um, I don't, th- it, it's not my favorite season of Fargo. Okay. But even the least, my least favorite season of Fargo is still really good. The first, <laughs> the first, the first season of Fargo is by far the best season in my mind. I, I think season two beats it by a hair. You think so? Just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah. the the first season, Lester, is this what you want? Why like, yeah, Billy Bob Thornton was killing it. Yo, Lauren <laughs> Alba was amazing. <laughs> Anytime he spoke, I was glued to the screen. I was like, come on. Keep it coming. Is, I, and like the, the thing is, right, with, with Chris Rock, it's so hard for me to picture him in like in something like Fargo and something like Spyro, like Spyro. I'm about to say Spyro, like the dragon. <laughs> I, like, but but in but in something like Spyro, because like his whole career, he's he's based off he's, comedy, right? And like his yeah. his angry tone is so used in his comedy. To where, like, even in the trailer, like, I saw the trailer for Spiral, mm-hmm. and he was, and he was like, come on, guys, we got to stop the killer. That's my Chris Rock impression. And, <laughs> but, like, the moment he said it, I was like, is a joke coming afterwards? But, um, I will say that, like, it takes time to kind of just get used to the fact that he's not doing a Chris Rock bit. And look, obviously, <laughs> obviously, because because I don't want people to watch this and be like, oh, what the fuck is this nigga talking about? Like, why is he talking like uh, like he knows Chris Rock? So I don't know Chris Rock, obviously. What I'm saying is, right, like, and this is just the, the story that I made up in my own head about what Chris Rock is doing with his career now. Chris Rock, I feel like, is at this point where he can just do whatever he wants. And now that he can like, like he control like what direction his career is going, he's just putting himself in like all the roles he actually imagined himself in and just seeing where it goes. I, weirdly enough, and this is, this may be not the right comparison. Okay. But I see like Chris Rock's career like now is the same way I see like Bill Burr's career. Like they've transcended stand up comedy almost. Yeah. And it's just like anything they want to do, they just kind of do. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, Bill Burr was in uh, Star Wars. He was in uh, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. He was in Mandalorian, Breaking Bad, King of Staten Island. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, okay. So back to this dude. Okay. Yeah. Let's get back. I'm sorry. It was. Oh, no, no, no. It's fine. So he starts talking about it. And uh, he was just like, Man, like, I just, you know, like, they fucked it up because, you know, Saw and, like, that's what I wanted. And I was like, I, you know, I, was, like, I, I was like, I disagree with you heavily because I think 90% of the Saw movies are trash. Mm-hmm. The first one's a mate. The, the one with Danny Glover? Yeah. The one with Danny Glover was fire. 
It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, How does Danny Glover lose to this nigga, right? And he beat uh, like a whole predator in Predator 2. I don't know. You know, Donald Glover's father just couldn't handle it. I'm just kidding. I really, um, thought, they, I really thought they were related. Like, really? Like, yeah, when I first learned the child is getting beat. Like, because I didn't follow the commu- like, uh, community. Yeah. And so like when it like my first introduction to Donald Glover was as childish Gambino. And when I found out his name okay. was Donald when I found out his name was Donald Glover, I'm like, like, what is this? <laughs> Danny's boy is, you know, he's doing his thing. And I I have like such a weird thing with him. Cause like I saw his like YouTube videos he did with like Derek Comedy. Okay. And um he did like a mixtape cul de sac that I heard and I was like, that's good. But I didn't connect that it was the same person. Right. And it wasn't until I saw Community, which like I was like waiting for that show to begin. Okay, yeah. I was excited. I was like, Chevy Chase, Joel McHale. I was like, this this will be interesting. Mm-hmm. And then I saw the first episode. I loved it. I saw the second one. I liked it even more. So I was like, let me do a deep dive on everybody. And then like I connected the dots with like Donald Glover and I was like, holy shit, I know him. Like, Okay, I was not expecting that, but um, I get so sidetracked. So, oh my god! Um, I think we both do. We're gonna have to work on that. We'll be all right. We're gonna have to be serious. <laughs> but go ahead. Yeah, what What the fuck is a podcast with two people rambling? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, all right, I disagree with you, but you know, you like what you like. Like, I'm I'm not gonna sit there and like try to shame somebody. So I was like, oh, oh yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And so he was like, yeah, like I wrote a script actually called Saw X. And I was like, mm-hmm. that's cool. That's cool. Like, cause like in my head, I'm like, you... I was like, okay, so is he writing it for fun? Mm-hmm. Cause I was like, if he's writing for fun, like that's his own thing. Like you could use it maybe as a spec script, like it gets you, Experience, but I was like, does he really think that like he's just gonna write the Saw movie and the studio will be like that? <laughs> so I, I was like, I was playing really neutral. I was like, oh, that's cool. And he was like, yeah. So here's the idea. And um, he's guy one. So guy two jumps in. He is basically guy one's hype man. Okay. Every time guy number one spoke, guy number two was like, that's a great idea. That's amazing. So he starts going into this detailed, um, like, breakdown. And he was like, does anyone want a voice chat? And I can explain it. And I was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> what did you, like, so, so, like, I know you say, yeah, I'm good right now, but how did you actually say it? Like, I didn't respond at all. I'll, I'll, I'll wait okay. for someone else to do <laughs> I, Like, I was wondering if you had, like, a way to, like, you know, like, like, shit no. out of it. Okay. Okay. My way of saying no, nah, I'm good is to say I'm good with answering you. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes the, the, the best way to avoid shit is with silence. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> just be like, oh, I didn't even see this. <laughs> uh, so, like, he was like, no one wants it. He's like, all right, cool. So he starts breaking it down. He's like, characters from every single Saw movie, like, makes a cameo. And it's like, this character comes back, and this detective comes back. And I'm sitting there, and I'm just like, so you're just making assumptions that this studio is just going to be like, bring every actor for this script. So, let Danny, you know, let Danny Glover coming back. I'm not <laughs> so I'm still just being like, I'm, I'm still being neutral. Like, I... Mostly because I don't want to engage. Right. And so then he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, I've um, he was like, yeah, I have other scripts for like other franchises too. And so guy number two is like, do you have the script for the uh, Saw movie? And I was like, oh shit! I was like, let him say yes. Like I want to read this. Okay. And he was like, no, I, I deleted it um after Spiral came out. But I know the uh, but I know the outline. I can tell you the outline. And I was like, motherfucker, never wrote it. Like, he never wrote it. Never, yeah. Yeah. Um, like, what's the point of deleting it after after Spiral comes out, nigga? Yeah. You like, lying he, ass nigga. Ah, you got caught, boy. 
<laughs> so I, I play it cool. And then he starts listing off all the other franchises that he has ideas for. Right. Is it, I don't know, is it a breach? Am I allowed to say what he wrote? Like, I don't know what the podcasting rules are. Fuck it. Nobody, nobody. Knows. Okay, we're, th- this has turned into a roast podcast <laughs> immediately. Clearly. Give me one second. I, I-, I got to pull this shit up. Because. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. That, yo, well, that, community, yo, yo, that community ever sees this, they're never going to. I mean, not that you want to go back. Right, yeah. but like they're like they're like on the blacklist you so hard. Like this guy is wrong. Is is everything wrong with like screenwriters and filmmakers and shit? Like, shit. like <laughs> I stay at home. Like I don't I don't care if someone from fucking North Carolina doesn't like me. <laughs> Damn. All right. Um. So he has his original script. Okay. That that comes that comes up later. I'm gonna tell you the name of it, but I need you to know that he's not kidding. Okay. So the name of his original script is Get In. Get in? Get in. Like get out, except except the opposite. <laughs> That's stupid. But go ahead. <laughs> That's stupid. Now, can Jordan Peele sue him over that? He... No. Yeah, he, he explained. He explained the plot is completely different. Uh, like, I don't want to sit there and like make the point that he's he's not. The plot is wildly different. It's okay. just a very similar name. But um, here is his list of films that he wants to make. That he posted in, like, a screenwriting group that I thought was for, like, people screenwriting. Mm -hmm. You know, weird of me to assume that. Um, Saw X. (laughs) Looper. The Godfather Trilogy. Okay. Star Trek Generation. I thought she was about to say uh, Saw 11. It just keeps going all the way to like 87. So Star Trek Generations. Okay. Star Trek Resurgence. Star Trek Resistance. This nigga loves Star Trek. Star Trek Recurrence. How to Win the Hunger Games. John Wick 0.09. What? Okay. Aliens vs. Predators. Okay, that's a, that's enough. That's enough. It's not enough. Because then he continues to list pretty much every single fucking DC movie possible. And, um, he, and he said he wanted to do it so he could prove to someone that he can make a good DCEU. You know, a lot of, a lot of people think they can make a good DCEU. You know... Uh, and then for those of you who are watching, actually, this person is actually probably watching right now. But me, me, me and Ronnell talk all the time, right, about, like, shit we would do with, 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 like, the DCEU. And I feel like a lot of, a lot of people talk about, like, how they would do the DCEU better. Yeah. And there's a strong chance that, like, none of what anybody, like, thinks will, like, ever transfer well to screen. Because it's easy to see it in your mind and be like, oh, right. yeah, yeah, like I see it, like that's that's how it would work. Yeah. Like, it would be amazing. Yeah. But when it comes to having the camera there, yeah, and the actor, like, it's completely different. Yeah. So when he starts listing that, that's whenever I start to kind of be like, I need to make sure that like he's okay. <laughs> you think there's something wrong with this dude? A little bit. But okay. I, I feel like that's mean to say. Um, of course not. Um, so I said, um, are you just writing these for fun? Mm-hmm. Because that's fine. Like, if he's writing it for fun, I'm like, you do your thing. 
if he's writing it thinking it's going to happen, that's whenever I'm like, you need to pump the brakes. So he was like, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, pretty much. And I was like, okay, good, awesome. He's like, but now I actually want to do them. So he wants to get sued. So I tried to like let him down gently, and I was like, I was like, you know, if you get some actors and low budget, like you can make a good fan film. A fan, <laughs> yeah, okay. See, that's fine, right? Fan films and all of that. If you if you're not like trying to make money off of it, but I this dude doesn't seem too grounded in reality. So I'm imagining he thinks he can wait till what he says next. And I'm I'm paraphrasing what he says because I really. Like, I'm not trying to, like, just on the off chance this dude sees this, I don't want him to sit there like, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Although I'm pretty sure, like, he already knows the chance. <laughs> um, so he goes, uh, well, he goes, well, you see, <clears throat> I'm going to start with my original story, which is low budget enough, and then I'll work my way up. Okay. And I was like, yeah, I hear you. Um, that doesn't really happen. Like, especially with, like, previous scripts that you own, um, usually the studio will hire the screenwriter and then they'll work on it. Um, you know, like, but they can work as, you know, spec scripts and, you know, like, keep them. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't expect to ever make them. Right. So then guy number two jumps in. This is the hype, man. Hype, this, man. This is Flavor Flav. This is is Flavor Flav this is Jeff, as a middle-aged right? white man. Okay. This is Flavor Flav, if you will. Oh, uh, Flavor <laughs> No, Flavor Flavor. Flavor <laughs> Flavor. White people, white people have to say the whole thing. <laughs> flavor Flavor. Like, put some salt on there and just like, oh, man. Like, put the chicken in the oven, just, like, it already comes seasoned. What are you talking about? Um, okay. So, he goes, um, well, if your original script is um, similar to the franchises and the film is exceptional, um, that would vastly improve your chances of working on the existing IP. And I was like, ah! I was like, okay, 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 okay. So, the success of the film may open doors to working on franchises, but those scripts are usually made with a team of people and they're under like the supervision of a studio. I would just suggest you keep working on original stories. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's a very unlikely uh, scenario. And, um, let's see. Then Hype Man jumps in and he's like, I've worked on spec scripts using existing IPs. I was told the same thing. Uh, convert them into original idea. This was hard to do because it feels like plagiarism to me. And it's like, bitch, it's plagiarism anyway. Like, if you're using fucking Alien vs. Predators, you're already plagiarizing the fucking idea. Right. But it's plagiarizing if you make it original art. Um... So then guy number one jumps in. He's like, my original idea is the one I'm most confident in, like story idea. I could totally make the new Saw, though, because like Chris Rock just walked up to Lionsgate and said, let's make a Saw film. It's Chris Rock. Hype man jumps in and says, LOL, true. I believe you could, too. I be um, so then I <laughs> jump in because now I'm starting to get upset, which is like why I never join groups like this. Right. And I say, yeah, but keep in mind, Chris Rock has been an international figure for 30 years. <laughs> like, like, of course, Chris Rock can you know, fucking do that. That doesn't. You know, so you got so you got invited to this group, right? Yes. Who, if you don't mind me asking. Who invited you? Um, he's somebody that I talk with about scripts and story beats, and he okay. came across it and was like, oh, I found it. Here we go. Okay. So has he been a member of this community for a long time? Um, I, I think so. He gave me information. Like, he didn't give me the link directly, 
Mm-hmm. He showed me um, a post where someone was advertising. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, the reason the, the reason why I ask this is right, and, and and this probably doesn't apply to this person, um, but reason why I ask this is because delusional people love echo chambers, right? Because if you go around, if you if you go around people who are just going to shoot straight with you right which is a rare thing these days but if you go around somebody who's going to shoot straight with you right it 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 breaks the illusion yeah so it's i I feel like uh, communities like this a lot of time like uh help people to maintain like you know like whatever whatever delusions or grandeur they have yeah you know i mean honestly screenwriters are kind of the worst at it this is not my, this is not my quote. I will not take any credit for this. I think Seth Rogen said it. Uh-huh. But people love to talk about a movie much longer than it would take for them to write it. Yeah. And I believe that to be a like pure fact. Yeah. Especially the dude that talked for 30 minutes and then he was like five pages, my guy. Who wants to edit it? Like <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> On the way to Hollywood. Like um, can't stop me now. <laughs> success one, everyone else zero. Like In- internet check. <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, so and just to, just the book end of this guy so we can move on. Um I said, he's been an international figure for 30 years. And he goes, yeah, man. And he pitched a bad script. And I said, I'm telling you, it does not work like that. Keep your expectations in check. And um, then a hype man joins in and says, it's definitely a case of how skilled of a writer you are and a lot of luck. And um, That is absolutely not true. They, like they did they, this so much about that that isn't true like like both parts like the skills and the luck like yes there is a lot of luck that goes involved yes yes there is a lot of skill that goes involved there but that does not dictate your success no, no i have an argument against that okay All I, have right. an, I have a, i have an argument against that okay mortal combat Explain to me what skill went into Mortal Kombat. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. 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 That's what I'm saying. Nothing went into Mortal Kombat. Now, I'm not talking about the old Mortal Kombat, which was, which was, which, mind you, was no cinematic masterpiece. But I'm talking about the new Mortal Kombat, the one that's even less of a cinematic masterpiece. I watched that and I was so heartbroken. We can talk about that in a second. But okay. yeah. But yeah. So I'm gonna it, let you finish up this story. Okay, this is a long ass story, but I, I I feel like it fucking matters though. Like I'm so fired up about it. Um, so here's where he he goes. Um, my dad knows a guy who works at Warner Brothers as an executive type. And okay, hype man comes in and says that's awesome. Maybe he can help you with your goal. And he was like, if I moved to LA and uh, got my scripts on paper, I could definitely get. You know, my original feature made on a good budget. And if I talked about Saul long enough, maybe that would happen. And I was like, you know, they're legally not allowed to read unsolicited scripts, right? Like, it's a lawsuit. (laughs) And then he goes, uh, Christopher Nolan uh, got from a black and white film shot outside his house. The Batman begins with two films in between. And, uh, (laughs) And so then that's where I stopped. Because I was in my because as soon as he said that I was like first of all Memento came out in beach one of those two films was fucking Memento, okay. yeah. And second of all, he was not the screenwriter. The screenwriter was hired like three months after Christopher Nolan signed on. What the fuck does that have to do with? Your oh my. God. So yeah, I'm done. I, so, so so I have to ask you this. I have to. <laughs> I have to ask you this. 
why did you get so involved in this? Why did you get so involved in this exchange? Because I really, I really like helping people. Okay. And when I, when I, before I say this next part, know that I am just as stupid as the people I'm complaining about. Disclaimer. Okay. okay. But I get really upset over stupid people. So it's like, I'll sit there and I'll be like, oh man, I want to help you. And then they spit like, for all intents and purposes, like bullshit back. I'll be like, hey, you know, that's, that's kind of bullshit. And they'll be like, no, it's not. And I'm like, motherfucker, look, look. <laughs> Like, I wish it wasn't a part of me, but, like, I want to be that person that kind of sets somebody in, like, the right track so they can go and help themselves. Right. But that's not something you can realistically do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. I think... Uh, I want to help out. I, like, I definitely want to help out the people closest to me. Okay. Right. Uh, I want to help myself. I want to help, like you know, like my mom and shit. Uh, something, something I, I I come to realize as I get older. Right. I just turned thirty in April, so I'm 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 pretty old. Uh, it's, no, but okay, continue. Jay Z lied. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we're calling you out, Jay Z. He was actually the one that wrote Saw X. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, Jay Jay Z lied. Thirty is not the new twenty. Um, the 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 older I get, the the more I realize, like, yo, like, no matter what I do, people are always gonna be stupid, right? Like. If this if this person if this person who wrote Saw X right <laughs> Saw Ten and Saw Saw Ten and Saw Eleven right if this person who who wrote that was dumb enough to think that they was gonna do something with it imagine imagine all the other places he's suffering in life. Like the way I see it is like, no, nah. you can't help niggas that's that's built that way. I know, like, and I know that I can't. But I mean, if we're getting real for a second, like, I want to help people as much as I can, mm -hmm. and it's probably stemming from the fact that I fucking hate myself. And so it's like, if I make someone else feel good, you're not that supposed to laugh happen. at that, but no, all right. No, no, it, was, it, it was the delivery. <laughs> it was the delivery for me. Yeah, but um, no, I just, as, as much as like it, every time that I do it, I end up feeling dumb for doing it. I always want to do it anyway. I don't know. It's a, it's a it's a cycle. It's a circle. I can dig that, man. Um, I'm I'm very much the same way these days. Like I'll get on like social media and post like uh, like inspirational shit to try and put smiles on people's face. And like I actually have people come into my inbox and say like, "Yo, like you doing that shit every morning actually helps me out. Like continue doing it. And it don't make me smile because I like I, I feel like I'm like I'm." I feel like I'm making like whatever little impact in the world that like I you know I possibly can. Yeah, I think uh, I'm one of those people actually. You are one of those people. Yeah. yeah. I've had like like maybe like 10 people do that. And like and like dude, like that shit, that shit put a smile on my face. So I don't know, man. Like I, I think you have a like there's definitely a, a way to help people and all that. But I don't I, know. I stepped back from social media, like I in noticed. a really heavy way. I noticed, and that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, I, I noticed, and, and, and like to me, that's a to, to me that's a good thing. Like I've uh, like now, what I do is like I, I'll post like I like to share like funny shit, or you know I'm just like looking to see like what people are talking about to keep my finger on the 
post, if you will. Mm-hmm. But um, outside of that, um, I really, I, I really don't say too much. I just like to let people know, like, you know, like stay safe out here um, because this summer is about to be crazy. Which, mind you, that that's a that's a topic I want to uh, attack on, like the next episode, like the COVID free summer and how wild people are about to be. It's going to, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm not prepared for it. It's about to be disgusting out here, bro. <laughs> it's going to be a fucking spit swapping makeout match with the whole world attending. Dude, it is going to be, it's, it's going to be the most violent summer. It's going to be, it's going to be the hottest summer you can imagine in literally every sense of the word. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like, and, and here's kind of where I went with social media. Like, I, I felt myself becoming way too attached, mm-hmm. but also second guessing everything I would post. Mm-hmm. Like, I would be like, oh, is this something that I should be posting? And then I would post it. And then, like, the moment I did, like, I would feel my, like, I'd have the notifications turned on and I'd be like, someone fucking liked it. That's what's up. And, like, it's. <sighs> It became gross. Have you, uh, have, I don't know if I, if I told you about it already, or maybe it was you that told me. I don't, I don't know. All I know is I watched it. Have you seen The Social Dilemma on Netflix? No. It's a documentary, right? Um, it's a bunch of, like, uh, people who had a, a heavy hand in, like, developing, like, uh, all these huge social media platforms. So, like, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of that, right? And they talk about how essentially they wrote it into the programming uh, for these apps to capture your attention and uh, like they, they like they affect your brain in a certain way. Like they they know what like they know what you're thinking. They know who you have a crush on based on like uh, how long you spend like looking at their pictures. They clock the amount of time that you spend looking at someone's picture. They uh, they know your they know your political leanings. They know all of this shit about you, dude. You could be thinking of something, right? And an advertisement for it will come up on your feed because that's how well they know you. And it's all that like it literally I was watching it and I'm like, this is this is the most sinister shit I've ever like I've ever seen. They literally found it, they they literally found a way to like it's it's mind control, bro. Yeah, and it, it feels like that. Yeah. Like even like while you're browsing it, like you sit there and you feel yourself like off, like almost on like rest mode. Yeah. And I don't know, it, it came to a point where it was like, like I deleted Twitter because anytime I went on there, it was just a bunch of people angry. Twitter is the, and this is I, about to be a deep conversation. Twitter is like the worst space I think I've ever seen. Yeah, and Instagram, like I still have my Instagram because I, I need some form of avenue for people to talk to me. Mm-hmm. But, um, like, I, I deleted my photos on there. Mm-hmm. Just because, like, uh, it was, like, one day, like, I just looked at them all, and I was like, why the fuck do I have this? Like, what, what purpose, like, what purpose is this selfie with me in a fucking monkey mask, like, doing? Yeah, that sounds fly. It, it is. It is, yeah. yeah. I love it. Dude, yeah, it's from, but... um, so, weirdly, so it's from a short film on Netflix. Mm. with um, a talking monkey and has like human teeth and shit it's fucking weird but it's it's like weird in that I can't look away uh, and um what film is this what is it called it's called um what did Jack do it's from like David Lynch okay yeah okay of course it's yeah David yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah so, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll check it out uh it's like 20 minutes long but like um yeah, it's a it's a mask and it's literally just the face of the fucking monkey with human teeth. And I mm-hmm. fucking love it. But like at the same time, like I see like I like I saw the photo of it and I'm like, does this really need to be documented? 
Yeah, you know, I have a I have a question. Because you, you you touched on it earlier about Twitter and like uh like the amount of angry fucking people there are on Twitter, right? I tell my friends all the time, right? Like uh and like I like I, I caught like a lot of uh, like a lot of heat for this and I don't think they understood it um the way I was trying to explain it. And let me first start by saying so you, so that you motherfuckers don't try to cancel me, even though I don't have anything to cancel, right? Um, outside like the first episode of this podcast. Um, In every uh, subsequent episode, but yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I uh, I believe in the I believe in the concept of, of Black Lives Matter, right? I believe I believe in you know like all of the shit that like uh, people who identify as uh, LBGTQ, like all of the letters, like believe it, like whatever you want, right? I believe in it. Well, like whatever you want. I consider myself an ally, right? However, I do think that a lot of the people that are on social media, right? Talk and conduct themselves in a way that's a very, uh, performative. Like they're trying to outwoke each other. Yes, exactly. They're trying to outwoke each other, and they're trying to gain like that. I guess I don't know if this is actually like a term for it, but social currency, internet clout, clout. Yeah, sure, sure, internet clout. Um, I think the amount of people that actually care about these things are the people who actually fall into those categories, right? Like, obviously, I'm Black, so I do think Black lives matter, right? I, uh, I have friends who are, who are gay and bi and all of those other things. And I, I do believe that, like, like, those lives matter as well, and so do their rights. But I think there's an absurd amount of people who are lying, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a lot of people who post Black Lives Matter on their on their Twitter thing, bro, they're white and they've said the N-word behind closed doors. And I'm not talking about the A. I'm talking about the hard R, my G. I think that a lot of people that post those type of slogans, they do it in they believe it in in like in theory. Mm -hmm. Like in their head, they believe it, but in practice. Yeah, that's whenever that's whenever complications start to arise. Exactly. Exactly. Like, and, and honestly, like it, even on like the the anti woke spectrum, like I think that the people who believe in like let's say like blue lives matter, mm -hmm. the people who really like believe in that, they believe in it because they've never had a reason to not. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. Um. I, I I don't I don't know. To me, it's uh, to me the word woke, and this is just in my mind, has almost become like a dirty word. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a dirty word. Like for someone to say that they're 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 woke, I'm like, you like, take a shower. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like a it's almost like a dirty word to me because. My understanding of what woke was like when the word first came out meant that you were like spiritually woke, like you were enlightened in a way, right? Now it's been it's being used for something, like I was saying, performative by people who don't even believe in, like, in the stuff that they're talking about. I think that like really what it comes down to is as we're approaching this age where it's like your social presence or your internet presence matters the same if not more than your real life presence people confuse the fact like they think words over actions mm -hmm. like paul mooney died today and you know like all these people were gonna be like oh my god like paul mooney like he was such an amazing person like he did this and he did this and this but like if you look deep into that person they'd be like how much did you actually like 
no one oh, else. And they would be like, oh, you know, I saw the uh, Chappelle show. Chappelle show, yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, so he really didn't mean that much to you. You just, you're a little sad by it, so you want to make sure that the world knows. Exactly. Yeah. You want to make sure that the world knows and you, 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 want to, you want to be in with the crowd because that's what everybody's talking about right now, right? And if you talk about it too, then no, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't have a whole lot of friends in real life. So, so like. You know, I, I have a theory about celebrity deaths. It's, it's, a consp- it's kind of a conspiracy theory, but I don't think it is. Okay. Um, you can tell how important they are culturally by the headline. Okay, elaborate, what do you mean? If, so there's two, there's two types of celebrity passing headlines, right? There's the one that seems like they've prepared the headline, which would be like Jessica Walter passes away at 80, star of Arrested Development and Archer. Okay. And it'd be like, okay, that's sad. But then there's the ones where you look at the headline and it looks like somebody just like frantically ran in to tell you and they'll be like robin williams died and you'd be like okay that fucking like that's one that matters yeah yeah and like even the paul like even with the paul moody one like you saw him mean, or dmx dmx was a big one just now mm-hmm. they'll be like dmx fucking died from yeah. buzzfeed <laughs> like right i don't know i it's. I feel like I'm looking way too far into it, dude. Look, look, and you know me for like, you've known me since what 2013. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm big on that conspiracy shit. Remember that? Remember that catfish we busted? For, oh my god! Can we Most, tell that story? Let's save that for another episode. Okay, we'll we'll do that another we'll do that another time. That is, okay. Hey, remember what? that. I'm just saying, remember that catfish we busted and it all started off with a question? Like, yo, what if what if this what if this woman isn't who she says she is? And then And then both answer. of us were just like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you start to put things together and then you find out that it isn't what you thought it was. Oh man, no, absolutely duh. Dude, that that was like two weeks of us like calling each other, being like, I have info. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So <laughs> With, with with that with that being said, like dude, if you have a thought, there's probably some. Le- it, it might not be all the way true, right? Because some conspiracy theories are just just out there, right? But if you have a thought like that, on some level, at one point or another, it probably was the case. Okay, so let me ask you this. Okay. What is one conspiracy theory that you are 100% convinced is true? <sighs> like, not a doubt in your mind. Man. Give me a second to think on that okay. one. Okay. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of wild shit that I think is true, but I'm not trying to sound like, you know, like like too crazy. I'm trying to, like, you know... This is a half roast, half conspiracy theory podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, don't don't let me forget because I want to come up with like a solid one, and then yeah. I just want to dive into it for like thirty minutes, so we could do that like the next episode or something. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I want to think of like a so- yo. I have to tell you this story. Okay. And and if this dude sees this, like he's a nice, like, don't get me wrong, he's like the nicest dude in the world, right? Great way to start a story. Huh? I said that's a great way to start a story. Yo, no, he's like, a nice before guy. I continue, he's he's okay. He's good. Yeah, he's like, this is a good dude, like nobody talks shit about him because I actually like this dude. I don't remember his name, but he was a good dude, right? So for a while, I got into like the whole esoteric thing, like stones and stuff like that. And like books on like, not exactly like the occult and shit, but like uh, things that improve myself spiritually because I believe in that shit, right? So okay. it's, this, uh, it's this store out in Virginia, right? I walked in there, 
the staff is really nice. The people in there are always really nice, right? And there's this guy, it's this white guy. He's tall and he's bald, right? I'm bald too, so it's okay for me to say that. And, <laughs> and he's standing across the, the, the way from me as I'm walking in. And, you know, I'm just looking around the store, looking at books, stuff like that, trying to figure out what I'm going to take home, you know? And then I noticed this tall white guy just staring at me, right? And, you know, I'm, I ignore it because maybe I'm thinking, you know, maybe he's never seen a nigga before, right? So I'm looking at, like, I'm looking at stone. I think I'm looking at, like, uh, like, a, like, a, like a necklace with a stone in it or something like that, amethyst or something pretty, right? And then the dude walks over. He's like, you're bigger than me. And I'm looking around because I'm thinking like, I'm thinking to myself, like in a very, like in a very cut and dry sense, I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, my G. Like, you're clearly a bigger man than I am, <laughs> right? I said, I think I even said it too. I was like, are you sure? Because you're like six foot five, my G. <laughs> He's like, he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, no, 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 not bigger, bigger than me in a physical sense. He's like, he said, it's like your, your aura, like your spirit is bigger than mine. And I'm not used to that. I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, this is different, right? So long story short, to, 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 to keep it short, right? Dude believed that I had like this, like this, like this crazy ass, like, almost like magical potential or something like that, right? He, look, he was looking at me like he was the piccolo to my Gohan. And... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, that got, that got me. That got me. Um, and the guy bought me two books and made a, made a suggestion on some, uh, some herbs for me to uh, try, like burning, right? Um... He got me this book. Uh, he bought me this book called the Nag Hammadi Scriptures. Oh. Actually, I'll show it to you. I, I'll, I'll show it to you uh, off off camera. Uh, off uh, off uh, what you call it? Off stream. Off stream. Uh, and he suggested uh, the book. This book called the Basics of Reiki. It's like. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's a it's a Japanese art. And it's like the controlling like uh, your your bodily energies with your uh, with your hands, or like uh, the the ability to channel energy to like heal and do other stuff, right? And there's actually like like scientific uh, like backing behind this type of stuff. I remember seeing it on Ripley's Believe in and that, and I was amazed by the shit. There's a whole episode about it about this dude who, who knew how to use Reiki and it was amazing. It was amazing, G. Anyway, uh, with all that being said, as outlandish as some things like, like seem, right? Like, I, 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 I think there has to be some truth to it because it's either this dude was off his rocker which, mind you, I don't believe he was off the rocker because I can look. You can look somebody in the eye and tell when they're not all there and when they are. A lot of the time. I mean, for decades, people looked at Kevin Spacey and thought he's all right. That's the that's the conspiracy theory that I believe in. I think. I think most of these dudes in Hollywood are touching little boys. I believe that. You you asked me which one I believe. I don't know about that. I mean, I, I think everybody except Keanu Reeves is touching little boys. <laughs> what about Tom Hanks? Um, like, I think everybody except Keanu Reeves is. <laughs> <laughs> you only said that because you watched John Wick 0 0.09 and you were like, I don't want to mess with him. John Wick 0.09. <laughs> what 
made this do anyway? Um, <laughs> I guess because like John Wick one, so maybe like zero point zero nine is him as an infant, just like holding double pistol. Oh my god! Like a like a. I would watch a, that shit. A baby like, assassin. Oh, a baby that is assassin. Dope. I would watch that. That is hard, yo. What if we're wrong? What if we're wrong? What if this motherfucker knows the truth and he's like, bro, John Wick, zero point zero nine. It's like someone takes his binky, he goes ape shit. Dog, it's like baby geniuses except good. <laughs> <laughs> baby geniuses. Oh man! All right, well, let's wrap up this podcast. <laughs> well, uh. We'll keep talking afterwards, but you motherfuckers don't get to know about what. Um, that was aggressive. I'm sorry. That was me. You that was me. You should apologize. In our in our defense, we've already talked about a bunch of stuff we're gonna talk about next time. And the next time's coming soon because we're we're doing this shit a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're literally doing this shit every week. And y'all have to support us or else you just don't like black people. Exactly. Or I don't want to say white people because it's 2021. If you don't like white people, that's okay. Like yeah. we, we had a good run. They could technically. They could. I mean, nobody likes men even anymore either. Yeah, so you're like I'm a white man. Like I am not. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I you're am not any target demographic. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely you're cancel regardless of anything. Yeah. You should just start saying what you want. <laughs> I just want to apologize on behalf of this thing. I didn't ask for it. I've I, I've tried before to stop the process, but here I am. Yeah, it happens. Um, I'm gonna get canceled for my dark ass jokes. <laughs> in any case, in any case, I'm either gonna get canceled or someone's just gonna email me and be like, "Are you okay?" and be like, "No." In any case, ladies and gentlemen, if you stuck with us, how long have we been recording? I have no fucking idea. A while. About a, about an hour? About an hour. If you I stuck with us, if you stuck with us for about an hour, uh, thank you. If not, you can go to hell. Um, but either way, uh, like and subscribe. And I'm going to have a better camera next time because I look terrible. Um... Well, I should say that I can see myself in 1080p, and I'm not proud of how I look. So. <laughs> All right, let's sign off here. All right, man. All right. Uh, see you next time. Do all the stuff everyone tells you to do. Yeah. Yeah.